If you've ever wondered what a Dura metric looks like, it's this box, and inside it has a cable. And that's really it. You just download the software. It has a light on it. You want the light to be facing towards you when you plug it in. On the other end is just a regular old USB, and that's it. This cable was kindly lent to me by Joby Tapia in San Francisco. Would you like some help selling your commercial apartment building in the San Francisco area? Contact Joby Tapia in the comments below. So I turn the key on. Okay, when you first open the software, you have to tell it what car you have. We have a 996. We're going to click OK. Now it knows that it has an ME 7.2 engine computer, I guess. That was automatically detected. It makes sense by the years it's talking about anyway. Next then we have the transmission. It's asking if we have a Tiptronic. We do not. ABS is this second one here. It gives you an age range and all that kind of stuff. I know already that ours is the newer kind. Uh, instrument cluster is the older kind. And we don't have any of this roof action. No Targa, no Cabrio. And OK. This is the main page. It's about as exciting as it gets. OK, first thing we're going to do here is go into the engine module. And we're just going to click down the line here, and you'll see what it says. So that's the part number. Um, not very exciting. I'm going to go to information. It's telling me. Oh, yeah, ignitions in range was a bajillion of them. And so in range 1, if I put it on the screen for what rev range range 1 is. And so I've got one ignition in range 2. I'll put up on the screen what that is. And that happened at 5,369.8 hours into the engine's life. That was before I got it and before it died, obviously, but it doesn't matter anymore. It was only once and it happened before the rebuild. Uh, then it has my VIN on there, uh, various other bits and pieces, the transmission type, interior equipment, not very exciting. Okay, fault codes, booyah. All right, so I don't have any fault codes, but if you did, your check engine came on, that's where it would show you what they were. And then from here, you could go to erase your fault codes. And yeah, erase my fault memory. I don't really have any. Oh, it's going to make all my modules need to get reset, I believe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, actual values. <laughs> and so you can select on here. So we start with just RPM is a good one to have. Or Obviously, we just started up, so we're not quite idling yet. It's going to drop down here in a minute. Uh, but that gives you the RPM, which is a good one to have up, I think, just in general. Uh, actual engine torque, we could add that to the list. There we go. Saying actual engine torque is 11% right now. I'm not really sophisticated enough to really know what you might do with that. But anyway, uh, so yeah, your um, mass airflow sensor, that's an important thing to check. So if you knew what the right readings were there, hopefully my readings are right. If you guys are wondering if your mass airflow sensor is correct, those are probably good numbers, I, I think. This car seems to run very well. All right then, so we're going to get rid of the torque. We're going to keep the RPM up. Oh, there we go. My uh, smog pump just clicked off. So yeah, the RPM is dropping down here. All right then, so what else we got? Engine temperature. You can monitor that. I've got a new engine temperature sensor in, in this car. And ignition angle. Mine says six to seven ish CRK, degrees CRK. We're going to look at fuel trims next. Now they're labeled RCAT for the fuel trim at idle and FRA for the fuel trim under load. Now the car's onboard computer takes information from the oxygen sensors to determine whether the engine is running rich or lean. And if you look at the fuel trims, they'll tell you if the computer has decided that it needs to add or take away fuel in order to maintain the optimal air-fuel ratio. For example, the vacuum leak we had in episode 55 allowed much more air into the engine than the computer was expecting. 
This extra air caused a lean condition, forcing the computer to add more fuel in an effort to keep the engine running. A normal reading for our cat is zero, meaning that no fuel adjustments are being made by the computer in order to maintain idle. In the case of Fra, you want an output of one, and that means that no fuel adjustments are being made while you're driving, while the engine is under load. Anyway, that's it. Let's get back to the action. Okay, so this is gonna be Fra bank one. Here we go. <laughs> What we want is for it to be one. That looks one-ish, don't you think? 0.99. All right, all right. Can we get the other one if we're not idling? Oh, uh, we got that exception. It's not connected. Is that pushing on that? I don't know why it keeps disconnecting. Okay, there we go. I just don't think we're connected anymore. Let's see if we connect there. Let's do the mass airflow. That should go up and down. Oh, it does. Okay. So, adaption range fra. 0.99. And that, that says zero. Is that okay? I don't know. Let's bring up the other one. I, th I think the 0.99 is probably okay. Get rid of that. And let's go down to bank two, Fra and R cat. So here's the idle one. That should be like one, and it's 0.99. That's okay. And then R cat. Presumably, it can't be an idle for that. Well, it just says zero. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to just bring the revs up a bit there. Yeah, that's just zero. Okay. It's probably good. Before we dive down the camshaft position rabbit hole, an explanation may be helpful. VarioCam is Porsche's version of variable valve timing, similar in spirit to the BMW Vano system or the Honda VTEC system. And the idea is to advance the engine's timing at high RPMs. And that's helpful because at high RPMs, the flame from combustion has less time to fully ignite all the fuel in the cylinder. Therefore, by advancing the timing, the spark plug will ignite the fuel a split second sooner, allowing for more complete combustion and more power. On this Porsche, the computer sends a signal to the VarioCam solenoids, which then use oil pressure to advance the intake cams around 25 degrees. Okay, so here we go. Cam, actual angle for camshaft bank one. Boom. Come on, buddy. There we go. So we go. At, when I'm not doing anything, it's minus two. Minus two point something. Then there's 2,000 RPM. You know, I should bring the RPM up here at the same time. <laughs> Boom. There we go. So idle right now. And so let's see where that, that changes. Oh yeah, so it already changed. A lot of you ask, when does it change? Well, it's not 3,000 RPM, obviously. Let's do that again. Oh, did I click both? Oh, they're both up now. Okay, whatever. So they should both go at the same time. So I'm gonna to try to do my revs here. So there is 1,500. Oh, 1,500, more than 1,500. They're not going 2,000, they're not going. 2,300, not going. Come on, foot. Oh, yeah, so by 2500, they are going. Interesting. And then what else we got here? So you can have it count misfires for any of the six cylinders, maybe. But now, no misfires at all. Everybody's happy. How many misfires you're allowed to have? We rev it up there. Everybody happy? Yeah, everybody happy. 
And so that's it. You could use this to try to figure out all kinds of stuff, I'm sure. I know I've used it for all kinds of things that you guys may have seen on the channel already. Uh, and then uh, that's really all you need the engine to be running for. We've got actual values, input signals is another one here. Clutch switch. Okay, yeah. You can see when I hit push the clutch off, on, it can see that. All right, super duper. So ready status, yeah, yeah. So here, I put them all back to fail just now by clearing all of the codes. Uh, but they we they said pass before, right, when we did the emissions test. And as we just drive the car, they will fix themselves. Uh, activations here, this one's pretty fun. We'll do this before we start the car. So um, you can just turn things on and off. So here we go, secondary air pump. That makes quite a lot of noise. Let's click that guy. Boom, there we go. Coding warning. Now, I don't know anything about coding. I'll turn the engine off here for a sec. There we go. And so it says warning, coding features can change control module programming and parameters. So go easy is what it's saying. It says, I understand the risks, proceed with coding. And so I don't know anything about this, but you can change parameters in the um, engine computer, I presume. Maybe you could change the rev limiter. You can maybe change how the throttle behaves because this has got the e-gas. I'm not sure. Also, stuff like how the locks behave. I know you can probably do stuff like that. Uh, command console. I do not know what that means. Unable to utilize command console because I turned it off, you fool. All right, anyway, so we wouldn't be doing anything with that anyway. That was all the engine module. That went down to the command console. We can minimize that. Then we have ABS. Again, really on that, it's telling you what you have, IDing the part number. Uh, if you have any fault codes, which I don't think you have any fault codes, you can erase those fault codes. No, don't need to, thanks. And then activations. Oh yeah, so we can go through here. I actually haven't done anything with this, but you can initialize the booster pump and the switch over valve and all those things that I don't fully understand. And then commands, calibrate steering wheel angle sensor, that could be handy. Command console, once again, that we're not allowed to touch apparently. And then instrument cluster, ID, information, activations. Oh yeah, you can make all the lights come on and off. What can we do here? Belt buzzer. Oh, there we go. Stop. <laughs> all right, there we go. So that's that's that. All those different things. The washer fluid warning light. You can check if all your lights are working, I suppose. Just sitting here without having to fuss about it. Instrument cluster. So that's that. And then airbag. So identification, fault codes. Erase the fault codes. I don't have any fault codes. Did we do this already? No, I don't have any fault codes. Boom. All right. Air conditioning. That one. Uh, no faults found. Same thing again, ID, fault codes, erase fault codes, uh, actual values within your AC system. That could be helpful, like um, the mixing flap, outlet temperature, outside temperature, uh, sun intensity, power supply terminal, fresh air fan. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff there. Command, command console again, moving on. Alarm. So the, the alarm I-32 or L-32, in the same sort of thing, identification, information, fault codes, erase the fault codes, activations. Let's activate something here. Can we activate something here? Tank lock. I might regret that. Let's do comfort opening. All right, it did something. Let me do all of those fun things. All right, moving on to the next alarm section, which is the same sort of thing. And then moving on, this is the Xenon headlights. Open up, my friend. There we go. ID, fault codes. I'll check it for fault codes. Is there any fault codes? No fault codes. Oh, activations for that one as well. Sorry, I'm getting impatient here. Servo motors. It's fine. The, the Xenon headlights, they like change their angle when you start the car. Turned on. Okay, what's this for? Park assist. Okay, we don't have any park assist action, so never mind. Sorry, didn't mean to bother you. Anyway, park assist features if you have some of those sensors on the car. 
and then seat memory, which this car doesn't have that either. It's got sort of basic seats. And so that, believe it or not, is kind of it in this section. In file, it's a work log. You can have it record what you're doing here. Uh, I haven't used that feature yet. You can have it print stuff as well. Functions, short test all modules, clear faults in all modules, refresh current view and set workshop information, tools, tool information, logging, add customer info, check for updates. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I'm just not used to using a PC. I am not good with it. Okay, and then help. I don't know how much help you're supposed to really get. Yeah, Durametric Wiki. And to the best of my knowledge, folks, that is everything there is on the Durametric Diagnostic Tool for Porsche. I wanted to take a moment to welcome the 10 people we have watching in Tbilisi, Georgia. Hello. I hope you all enjoyed today's deep dive into everything Durametric. Unfortunately, though, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you.